We are told by the Secret Service that he is safe. But where is he? He was hustled out of that area by the Secret Service in a motorcade. Uh, is, he, is he in a hospital? Is he uh, still in a car? Is he still in the area? We're being told that the governor of Pennsylvania has also been briefed on the situation. Um, he said that violence targeted at any political party or political leader is absolutely unacceptable. He says that Pennsylvania state police are on the scene in Butler County and work working with federal and local partners. The governor of Pennsylvania briefed, the White House briefed. I'm just getting some more notes here. We're also being told that a local emergency room physician saw a man who was shot in the head. We don't know who this person was. Clearly, it's possible that someone else may have been hit when shots uh, rang out at this event. Uh, clearly, this is a chaotic scene. Uh, there were thousands of people at this rally. And, you know, Bob, I know that you've covered plenty of these. Uh, what is the sense of security when you're there? I mean, you go through all of these checks, but still, you're packed into a small space with thousands of other people at a time when emotions are running high. What is it like to be inside one of these rallies? It's a very intense environment. It's a very crowded environment. And our reporting, as you just noted, is that there's concern that there's not a real sense yet of whether this was one shooter or what ha exactly happened. I have sources who are at the rally texting me right now saying there's bedlam on the scene. There's concern about what exactly happened. Were there multiple shooters or not? Are people safe? And so. For the Trump rally, when you're, what you're seeing there on screen, is what often it follows former President Trump as he's on the campaign trail. He's alone on stage. The Secret Service stands about five to ten paces off. And you have between five to 15 or sometimes even 20 to 25,000 people. He often goes to arenas, some of the minor league hockey arenas around the country in smaller cities. But often in the summer and springtime, he's outside. And you have to go through a long line of Secret Service to get into the event to make sure you're fully go through a magnetometer to see if you have any kind of weapon or metal on you. And so it's a very slow and orderly process to get into these events. Secret Service has presence not just at the immediate site, but at surrounding neighborhood locations. Uh, this is an unusual one. And that former President Trump usually has a, a wider stage. Uh, this is a, a bit of a smaller rally in uh, the small area of Butler, Pennsylvania. And you bring up an important point. We don't know yet what the scope was. Who opened fire? Was there more than one person? Were there more than one? Was there more than one person hit? Uh, we're seeing reports of uh, uh, someone else uh, possibly conducting CPR at the scene. But it's just too early to know. Um, we are still getting information in, um, but this is, uh, this is a horrific moment in American history, no matter what the outcome is. He is safe, we're being told, but it doesn't um, change the fact that this is truly historic. It's historic. We are watching something, political violence in real time. And the governor of Pennsylvania, Democrat Josh Shapiro, just said on social media, this, this has no place in Pennsylvania or the United States. You're seeing right now in this immediate aftermath a bipartisan outcry and outrage about what unfolded in Butler, Pennsylvania. The governor of Pennsylvania, Josh Shapiro, said, I have been briefed on the situation. The police are on the scene. He's working with federal and state and local partners. We're told the White House, the president of the United States, Joe Biden, also briefed running against Trump for, for in the race. And, and Bob, I'm going to jump in because we do have a, a statement now from a spokesperson representing former President Trump. It says President Trump thanks law enforcement and first responders for their quick action during this heinous act. He is fine and he's being checked out at a local medical facility. More details will follow. I'm going to read this one more time. This is a statement from President Trump's team. It says President Trump thanks law enforcement and first responders for their quick action during this heinous act. He is fine and is being checked out at a local medical facility. More details will follow. More details will follow, Bob, because this is... Um, this is an active crime scene. I and mean, that's why we're trying at CBS News to take our time to digest the information. We're getting the statements from the local leaders, the state leaders, federal law enforcement. But this is a fluid moment. You have still people on the ground, on, on the site of the rally in Butler, Pennsylvania, 
crime uh, officials, crime and law enforcement officials are trying to piece together exactly what happened. You see the Secret Service ducking down there. It, it has echoes of what happened to President Reagan mm -hmm. when he was shot by John Hinckley at the Hilton Hotel in Washington, D.C., the ducking into the limousine, rushing to the hospital. And let's remember, it's important at these moments these crossroads in American history, especially that those that involve violence, to not make guesses about what happened. President Reagan famously was in the limousine on the way to the hospital and said, I'm okay, I'm okay. But he didn't actually know the full extent of the damage that had been done by the shooter to his body. And so the Secret Service, as history has now shown us through many books and reporting, did the right thing by taking President Reagan to the hospital to make sure he got a full check, didn't take him back to the White House. In fact, years later, multiple Reagan books show if he had gone back to the White House after being shot, he might have risked mm -hmm. death. And so these are very fluid moments where even the person involved sometimes doesn't have the full grasp of what exactly has happened. We're trying to learn more and more. And we do know that he is being checked out uh, by medical officials to to determine the extent of his injuries, if any. It is possible that he was just grazed. It is possible uh, that it was more than that. This comes on a day when uh, we were expecting potentially news on who he was going to announce as his vice presidential pick. You and I spoke by phone uh, this evening to, to learn about your reporting. And we have statements here uh, from some of the top contenders. Senator Marco Rubio has tweeted, on X, we are praying for the president and all of those attending the rally in Pennsylvania today. Doug Burgum has uh, tweeted, please join Catherine and me in praying for President Trump and his family and everyone attending the rally today. J.D. Vance, senator from Ohio, saying, everyone join me in praying for our President Trump and everyone at that rally. I hope everyone is okay. That is a sentiment that is uh, being echoed across the country, across the world, I am sure. Uh, but this is the worst possible scenario. This is, as you said, political violence unfolding in front of us. It is something that has not happened so thankfully in recent pre presidential cycles. As a reporter, you're almost sometimes attuned to how Secret Service has a constant presence, but luckily it has not been something you think about that you're on somehow the precipice of violence when you're covering a rally for President Biden or for former President Trump. I'm getting text messages from people who were at the rally, and of course we're going to be careful here, but there is concern among those who were there and those who were talking to those who were there about whether some people in the crowd might have been hit as well or, or, or affected in any way by the violence that has unfolded today in Butler, Pennsylvania. Former President Trump raising his fist in defiance. This is a, a moment for Trump supporters as they talk to CBS News tonight where they feel like he is determined to carry on in this race, but they're still just stunned and shocked. Uh, when, a, when a president or presidential figure is facing an assassination attempt, the nation is on the edge. Even if they dislike that person mm -hmm. deeply on a political level, you think about that moment on CBS News in 1963 when Walter Cronkite took off his glasses after President John F. Kennedy was assassinated. Thankfully, in this instance, former President Trump, based on the statement from the campaign and Secret Service, is in a safe place, is in somehow, somehow being treated for the injury. But you could see blood visibly on his face based on CBS News's footage and on photos that have come out of this event. He is walking there. He walked, raised his arm several times as he made his way off the stage. Uh, but you are watching history unfold. Tragically, it involves violence this time. And it is a reflection of our time. Emotions are running high, and this is something that so many people worried about on, on, on both campaigns. These are highly charged times um, in our political reality, and these are large events. These events are meant to be large. They're meant to draw a lot of people, and these are the types of, event, of events former President Trump, as you said, likes to conduct. Um, I want to recap for everyone who just might be joining us now. Former President Trump um, has been escorted away from a rally in Butler County, Pennsylvania. This is after uh, shots rang out on the scene. He ducked, was escorted away quickly by the Secret Service, covering, uh, bringing his hand to his head. Um, it is unclear if he took a direct hit. It is unclear if he was grazed. But we do have a statement from his campaign. I'll read that now. It says, President Trump thanks law enforcement and first responders for their quick action during this heinous act. He is fine and is being checked out at a local medical facility. More details will follow.